In next few minutes, we'll be discussing about the COVID-19 variant Omicron. Hello friends, this is Dr. Preeti Sharma, Senior Consultant Pulmonology and Critical Care at Apollo Clinics, Sector 8, Chandigarh. On November 26, 21, WHO declared this B11529 variant as a variant of concern and named it Omicron. Why was it labeled as a variant of concern? This Omicron variant has several mutations, much more than the previous versions of the variant. And these mutations are mainly on the spike protein, which has resulted in various rates of transmissibility by this virus. So this Omicron variant spreads much faster than any other previous variants. Therefore, it was labeled as a variant of concern. It is much faster than the Delta variant and also than the other variants. So what are the symptoms which are caused by this variant? The symptoms caused by this variant are much more similar to the common cold, which is experienced by the people in any ways. So it is like scratchy throat, sore throat, or the running nose, stuffy nose, nasal congestion, fever with or without chills, headache, body aches, lot of muscle fatigue, as we have it in a common cold. Based on the symptoms, we cannot differentiate this variant from the common cold. Only the testing can tell us that whether we have this COVID-19 variant or not. So next comes the testing. What is to be done when we have these symptoms? So we have two kinds of tests available with us. These are the antigen tests or the RT-PCR based tests. So antigen tests are widely available these days. They are also provided as home kits, self testing kits, which can be used by the people at home. Antigen kits can be false negative in some patients when, when the patients do not have much of symptoms or they test too early. You have a contact with the patient and then you say that today I'm testing for the kit. So the test is going to come negative. Any negative antigen test has to go for an RT-PCR testing if you have symptoms for the disease. So which is very, very important. But in case the antigen test positive, there is a very likely low likelihood of chances of its being false positive. So once the test is positive, you take yourself as a COVID positive patient and follow the isolation and the further procedure. Once it is negative, you need to go for an RT-PCR testing so that you confirm that you have the disease. If the RT-PCR is also negative, still there are 10 to 20% chances that you can be positive, but the test is negative. So you can go ahead with the testing within next 24 to 48 hours again, if you have the persisting symptoms. So this is about the testing. Once you develop the symptoms, you have to have this testings done. Now the people are asking the questions, how is Omicron different from the Delta variant? So Delta variant, we all have seen the devastation caused by this Delta variant in the second wave of the disease, which we experienced last year. What we had seen was it was really very lethal. The symptoms onset was very fast and the people progressed to severe disease in very short span of time. So this did not happen with this virus. Whatever reports have come up and whatever we have seen in our day to day practice till now is this is slow progressing virus, which has more of the upper respiratory tract involvement rather than the lower respiratory tract. So people do not have much of severity of the disease as compared to the Delta variant. Moreover, the active period where the hospitalization is required or you say the median time for hospitalization of the patients has decreased in this wave of the pandemic. So this is the difference between the Omicron and Delta. The Delta was very lethal and we had very high mortality rates while we were facing the Delta variant. We have lost many doctors to the variant and lost many lives. But here we are able to manage it somehow and the severity is not that too much. Again, if we come to the next point, it could be because of the vaccination campaign also. Omicron can occur in a patient who is already vaccinated or is previously infected with the virus. But the another thing is the patient may not have a severe disease. Only the at-risk categories like the elderly, the people who have heart diseases in the background, diabetes, hypertension or any kind of a chronic lung disease or immunocompromised state. These people, these category of people are more prone to have severe infection or they are more prone to have this kind of an infection again, even if they are vaccinated. 
so that is the difference with omicron can even infect any kind of vaccinated people but the susceptibility rates are lesser than the people who are vaccinated but for unvaccinated it is very high so it is affecting more in the people who are unvaccinated and they are also having a bit of severe disease requiring hospitalization but it is manageable in this case of a variant so that's why i would like to say that we need to have our covid appropriate behavior in place as of now still because omicron does not recognize people who are vaccinated or not vaccinated so keep your masks on keep a social distancing follow the covid appropriate behavior avoid gatherings avoid crowds and just fight with this wave of the pandemic thank you